okay so uh, as i said today we're going to learn about one of the most interesting in my opinion features of the uh, chat gpt api and in general uh, one of the most interesting features of all the ai tools and this is the fine tuning okay so first of all are you familiar with fine tuning what it is more or less have you heard of it you haven't have you heard fine tuning no okay good so today you're going to learn how uh, you can add knowledge to any artificial mo uh, artificial intelligence model okay so so far we're talking about how we can use the chat gpt uh, 3.5 chat gpt 4 uh, but even though they have so much knowledge uh, from scraped data from the internet okay you can add additional knowledge to them for example uh, if you're working in a company and your company wants to implement ai um, the projects that your company is working on might not be available publicly right so ChatGPT will have no idea about them so when you ask questions about the, uh, about those projects the ai model will be completely inefficient and in that way when you fine-tune chat gpt you can actually make it work properly with the data that you have okay okay so before going into how you can actually fine-tune uh, chat gpt or make chat gpt to learn new things uh, let's talk about uh, how the fine-tuned models are possible and also you can see how they are priced and so on hello yeah come in nice glasses <laughs> all right so uh, you can see and if you go to the uh, open ai page you will see uh, you know the pricing of the uh, of the fine-tuned models is different type of pricing is different type of tokens that you can use okay and you can fine-tune uh, actually scratch the last two models so da vinci and the uh, budgie are now depreciated but you can fine tune gpt4 and gpt uh, 4 uh, 3.5 okay so this means that we'll uh, write some code that you provide those models and on the top of those models you can add some additional information to them so they can work with it in the future okay so how is this done okay so um there are actually different approaches with which you can fine tune a model this is just one of them we're going to use python for that uh, but the idea is very simple you can have some text which is let's say your company information so once you have this information uh which you want to use to teach uh chat gpt you need to put this information into the right format so chat gpt can be tuned with questions and answers so for example you give an example question and answer to chat gpt and then it learns uh, those questions and answers so later when you ask it can use them as a reference this means if you want to pass particular text to teach chat gpt something you need to break it into questions and answers and then um, pass this into a json l file okay which is quite similar to json just just a slight different format and then pass those questions and answers in the form of this file um, to chat gpt okay i will show you exactly um, the ways with which we're going to do that okay okay so normally if you want to fine tune come on okay so normally if you want to fine tune um, a model from the command line not using python you can use this command okay so you just write open ai uh, create then you're passing the json l file with the data okay and then you pass the uh, base model 
whether GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. Today we are going to do something more sophisticated and easier to grasp uh, using Python. So we are going to have the following workflow. Step one is going to be uh, making our data into questions and answers in the right format. Step two is going to be uh, copying and pasting this data into a JSON-L file. Step three is going to be sending this file to um, the ChatGPT uh, API. Okay. Once we send the file, the next step is going to be to train the model using that file. And finally, we just need to wait a little bit for the model to be created. Okay. Once the model is created, we can use it. Okay. So now I'm going to show you each and every step and pay attention because this is also going to be uh, your assignment. So pretty much what we're going to do today, 90% uh, of this is going to be your assignment. So uh, if you bear with me today, you're pretty much, you pretty much have done your assignment. Okay. So um, I'm going to use PyCharm. You can actually do that with any code editor. You can also use Ideal for that. Okay, it really doesn't matter. It's a very simple script, just one page. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm just going to create a new project. So I'll call it fine tuning. One or fine tune. Okay. And then I'll create a project. So we're going to work here in the main file. Uh, the only additional step that you need to do is just to install OpenAI and this is all the pre-requirements that you need to do. So I will do pipe install OpenAI. Okay. Um, also before starting, just to mention, I uploaded the uh, steps that I used inside uh, Blackboard, okay, which should be helpful for you. The only thing I want to ask you is uh, don't run the files straight away yeah come in yeah, no worries uh don't run the file from there straight away because every time you run the file a new fine-tuned model is going to be created okay so uh try to bear with me and at some point we can run our files all together okay so the models are created okay so um the first step, as I said, is going to be to actually um, train or actually create the questions for our training data. Okay, so let's imagine that we're just having some text. Okay, so if we just have some text, we want to create it uh, to, to make questions and answers from it that are in the same style of a J JSON L file. So let me show you how a typical JSON L file looks like. Okay. 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 So here you can see in this file that we're going to use to train the ChatGPT model that we have many lines. And on every line, we have exactly the same structure, okay? So firstly, we have a message, okay? And here in this parenthesis, we have a row, user, content, okay? And we imitate a question or something that the user writes, okay? And then we imitate an answer from the ChatGPT API. So we pretty much say, okay, when I ask you this, answer this. And of course, ChatGPT is going to use this information to be a little bit more creative, right? It's not going to use it straight away in, in that manner. So for example, here we're having different uh, books 
and this is a very small summary of those books yeah come in So in this particular example, I'm saying ChatGPT, okay, when I pass you this book, okay, uh, tell me that this book involves, this is a summary of the book right here, okay? But of course, in most cases, it's going to be just questions and answers, right? So what's the weather today? It's sunny. Uh, what is the color of the uh, this type of microphone? Why, okay? Th those are going to be typical questions and answers. All right, so that looks complicated to build it uh, just by yourself, right? So, of course, there is a way easier way to do that. Um, one quite easy approach that I'm using, okay, is simply to use the ChatGPT web to build the prompt instead of you, okay? So pay attention here. Uh, here we just have a text. I'm going to send it to the web version of ChatGPT API, okay? And here I will say, break the following text, then I will pass some text, okay? And then I will pass the type of data that I want my text to be in. So I will say, break the following text into 15 questions and answers using the following format, okay? It's important that the JSONL file that you sent to train the ChatGPT API should have minimum 10 questions, okay? Normally, the way that those models are trained in real life, uh, we're passing tens, hundreds of thousands, even millions of questions, okay? But as you can see, it's very easy to build them from text using the web version of ChatGPT API. So let's try that. Now, I will copy this text right here and I will just go to chat openai.com okay and I will put that now the next step is going to be to find the text with which I want to train chat GPT API so let's see um, any suggestions for text eclipse ah solar eclipse okay nice very good for today right so let's do solar eclipse yeah. wow nice google is doing some fun animations there so let's go to wikipedia and let's copy the first two paragraphs okay so for those that just came uh just let me mention again this is going to be pretty much your assignment so uh, make sure that you follow it that you follow what we are doing today so I'm going to copy the text and then I'm going to replace this prompt right here okay so as you can see here is a text break the following text here is a text into five questions and answers using the following format okay and you can see that here I'm writing the messages uh, questions and answers okay so here we're using just the format not not what's written inside okay let's do that and now chat gpt is going to build of course all the prompts instead of you so you don't need to build them on your own so you might ask yourself the question but is it a real training since we use ai to train ai it is because we're asking AI just to convert the text that we provide into questions, right? So we're still using a new text, text that ChatGPT doesn't know. We just use ChatGPT here to convert the text into the right format, okay? And I advise you, you can try this now with text that you like, whether it's our Eclipse or something else. Okay, so you can see that here we're having 15 questions and answers. And I will just copy them. Okay. So I will go to PyCharm. You don't need to go to PyCharm for that. You can just create a new text file uh, and then put JSON neo extension after that. It will also work. But here's what I'm gonna do, new file. And then I'm going to write here, 
sour data dot json l Okay, so we have just a simple new file with extension JSONL. Now I'm going to paste the input from the ChatGPT API. Okay, I'm just going to remove the spaces in between. Okay, and as you can see, now my text is broken into those data, se data sets that are questions and answers in this JSONL file. So now, once this is done, your data is ready. Okay, you don't need to do anything else about collecting the data. The rest is just using this file to fine tune uh, your AI model. Okay, so before continuing, any questions? No questions? Okay. Okay, so once the data is created, now we can start um, fine-tuning our model. So how do we do that? Firstly, let me get a little bit closer. The first thing that we need to do is uh, to import some libraries, okay? So I will actually, okay. We're gonna do some time delay, so I will import time. Yeah, come in. Okay, and after that, let's do from OpenAI, import OpenAI. Okay, and then we're gonna pass the API key. I'll do that real quick. API key, and you can just copy the key from uh, Blackboard. Okay. So now, um, the first step that we need to do is to uh, send our JSONL file to uh, the OpenAI database. So we can use it from there, okay? Let's do that. Now, I will do file equals to client.files.create, okay? And here I will define the path to the file. So file open. Okay, let's put the path to the file. So since our file is in the same directory as our script, I can just pass the name. Okay. And then I'll write here RB. Okay. Uh, after that, when you pass a file, you need to define the purpose. So I will do purpose equals to fine-tune. Okay. And then I'm simply going to print the file once it is uploaded. Okay. So I run the code now and let's see what happens. So once the file gets sent, um, it should, we should get printed the response. Okay. So let's hit that. Oh, let 
let's see, maybe we have a problem here. Oh yeah. Yeah, so here it missed. So here it missed just this Kali preset. And the rest looks fine. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so you can see that the file now has been sent. Okay, and we create a new file object. So this is pretty much what the file object here shows. Okay, so we have the file ID, which is the most important part. We have the bytes, we have created that, the file name, and the, st the status, which is uh, processed. So we're all set. Now, uh, once you uploaded the file, the idea is that you use the file ID to create your fine-tuned model. Okay, so were you able to send the file? Okay, so this is how you upload the file and our next step is going to be to uh, actually fine tune our uh, model, okay? So, now let's uh, write tuned model okay and this will be equal to client dot fine tuning dot jobs dot create okay and now I'm going to pass the training file here so I will do training file equals okay and if you want to do this in the same script so you upload the file and then immediately you pass the ID of the file uh, you can simply write file dot id so I can make training file equals to file dot id okay if you already know the id so you uploaded the file already you can simply put the ID here, which is what I'm going to do now. Okay. And I'll comment out this because the file is already uploaded, so we don't need to upload it again. And I'm just hard coding here the file ID that I got printed right here. Okay, so the next important thing, as we saw on the presentation example, is to obviously pass the base model that we want to train. So I write here model equals, and you can choose whatever model you like. I'm going to use the GPT 3.5. So I'll do GPT dash 3.5 dash turbo. Okay. So once we do that, um, I'm going to firstly print the tuned model so you can uh, see the object that we have returned. But also the other thing that I want to do um, is I want to wait properly for my model to be created. Okay. So when you create or when you initiate the creation of the fine-tuned model. Yeah, come in. So when you initiate the creation of a fine-tuned model, this is going to take some time. For example, it will take like five minutes, it may might take 10 minutes. And what you want to do is really to monitor, uh, and to monitor the state of your fine-tuned model until it is created, okay? So let me show you how to do that. And then we can uh, continue into creating our model. So firstly, I will create a new 
variable job that will be equal to client dot fine tuning dot jobs dot retrieve okay and here i'm going to pass the id of the fine tuned model that we created right here so i will do tuned model dot id okay so the idea is we create the new model here once it is created um, we monitor here uh, what is the uh, what is the id of that model okay so firstly this job here is going to um, give us some information about the model we just created now this job here is going to have a few parameters one of those parameters is the status okay so you want to continue when the status is succeeded so here is how we can do that so i will do while job dot status is not equal to succeeded okay then i will do job equal client dot fine tuning dot jobs dot retrieve and again i'm going to pass the id okay so i'm going to repeat what we did here and then i'm going to print job dot status okay so we'll see what is the status if it's not succeeded yet and then i wait five seconds okay so here is the idea we create a model we print the full model object then we create a new job right here and start monitoring uh, the information about the model and actually here i will also do uh, actually i'll copy this okay so uh, then we start monitoring the state of our model so if the state is not succeeded we will continue displaying the states of our model until it succeeds okay so once it succeeds then we have a new model and we're actually able to use it okay all right and here we get the idea. now let's see uh, if that is going to work so I'll run that. And you can see that firstly we created now the new job right here. And now we're validating the files. Okay, this is the first step. So here you either see that the files are validated and they are correct. Or you see that the files are uh, failed. So let's see. Okay, so if you chose Qt, this means that there are uh, probably more jobs that are currently ongoing. Okay, so of course we will need to wait some time. In the meantime, you can also try to uh, create your fine-tuned model and uh, get into the same state. Okay, and let me know if there are any questions. Okay, so... Uh, normally when you're creating models I can see that here so this one model that uh, is probably the one that I started there are also a few failed you can see pretty much all the jobs here um, for the uh, fine-tuned models that you have okay so this is in uh, chat GPT fine-tuning and you can check of course the successful models and you can also check the ones that actually failed okay so let's see this one. Yeah, it's still waiting. Okay. 
All right. So did you try it up? Yeah, I guess uh, all the models, they will be in this queuing state, right? Because it seems their servers are busy. Uh, I tried yesterday and uh, it didn't queue at all. So maybe there were not that many people using the servers. Um, but if you go to the point when where it is uploading, some of you will get an error now because the maximum models that uh, we can fine tune at the same time is uh, three of them. Okay. So... Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm going to continue. I have some modules that I already fine-tuned and we're just going to test them and see how they work. Okay? Okay, so... Okay, so if your model is queuing, you can stop the, the code, right? Uh, the actual process is not going to stop. It will still be queuing here. As you can see. Um, until I, of course, delete it or do something else. Here it is. So I will delete those jobs that were created. Okay, and as you can see that uh, yesterday I was actually creating some models and um, they were successful, right? So once a model is created, you get an ID from that model, okay? So for example, let me go here, okay? So let's say that we passed this step, you know, when we got succeeded. This means that we've got a new uh, AI model created, okay? So I will comment out everything until here. Okay. And then I will use the uh, fine-tuned model that was created, okay? So once a fine-tuned model is created, uh, you will get again a JSON response that will have many parameters. And to be honest, most of the parameters uh, are written right here, okay? But the most important of those parameters is the model name, which is uh, the actual new AI model that you created, okay? So, for example, uh, this model right here, I created yesterday, okay? And I used uh, the JSONL file that is uploaded in Blackboard, okay? So, let's use this model and see... Uh, if it's going to uh, give the information related to the prompts that I passed to it. Okay, so let's go here. And uh, now I will create a very simple um, chat GPT completion prompt and I will pass our model name to see how it works. Now, normally, uh, when the model gets created right here, uh, of course, you can actually print its name. So, I'll give you an example. Uh, let me just... So, for example, you can print, right? Job dot fine-tuned model, okay? And this will be the name of uh, your model. So you can see that the job is equal to this retrieval line where we uh, actually retrieve the job. Uh, and fine-tuned model is the actual name of the model that we want to use. So I'll remove these lines here. So I don't want my model to be succeeded. Uh, and I'll do that because I just want to print the name of the model, even if it's still queuing. So if I run this, okay. Oh, it first needs to send the files, okay. Okay, so the model needs to be created first before using the name, so I will not be able to show you the exact name there, okay? Uh, but 
if it is created you will be able to see the name in that way here so you can see the models that were created successfully they have their name generated so normally when you write this line you will see the exact name of the model the same like this one okay All right, so now, as I said, let's say that we have created our model and what we want to do is to use it. So we can do that just like uh, using any other chat GPT model. So I will do completion. Equals to client dot chat dot completions dot create okay then here i'll write model okay and here you're going to pass the uh, model name okay so normally you would pass job dot fine tuned model in that case i will simply copy and paste the names that i already have here of my successful models for example this one okay and i will paste it here Okay, after that, so if I write here, messages equal, okay. And now I can ask a question to ChatGPT just in the same way, like we're doing uh, in the rest of our lectures. So here I write row is going to be user okay and then content okay uh, and here for the content because I know um, that my model was trained in the JSON with the JSON file with from blackboard um, I will just go here uh, actually, I will just go to the original file. So it's going to be this one. Let's open it. Okay. And I will just copy one of the uh, question prompts. So for example, this one. So I would expect when I pass the adventure begins to get the answer, the true tale of the courage of discovery. Okay, so this is uh, what's gonna be for example in that book okay so again uh, the JSON the JSON L file that you have in blackboard is simply names of books and then a summary of what was in that book so I'm just going to pass that okay and finally I'm going to uh, print the result so I will do print completion dot choices zero dot message okay so this will be the message all right so i'm going to run that and let's see what's going to be the answer all right so here we printed the message and you can see that the prompt is actually related to uh, the book right so it's not exactly the same okay but it says it's tale of bravery discovery and so on uh, also it immediately recognizes that just by me sending this prompt what I want is a summary of this particular book okay so if I send some other book let's see so let's say this one then I should see something related to that specific book okay so let's run that
okay and we got the um, the summary for this book which is related to uh, the actual answer so the actual answer is an intriguing mystery uh, that will keep you guessing until the end and here we have a Mr. Mising account of hidden truths and the quest of knowledge okay so it's again some mysterious thing going on in this book so you can see it doesn't give you the answers exactly like how you ask them uh, but it gives you something related so this is just a very 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 small example um, or and very small set of data just 15 questions uh, but imagine in real life uh, when companies do that yeah uh, just one second uh, when the actual companies do that they send billion thousands even billions of those prompts so chat gpt can actually learn to uh, answer in more dynamic way yeah so let's say after you go train the model yeah um, where is that stuff going to be saved good question it's going to be saved in your model okay so and this is the good thing is that now you own uh, your model this is not going to go into the main uh, chat GPT 3.5, right? Nobody else will have access to your data. So once you train the model <coughs> and you can keep training it with like new information as much as you like, okay? Uh, and all the information is going to be under your model name. That's it. So anybody that has this model name can actually uh, use your data. But people that doesn't have your model name will never be able to use your data this is the idea does this answer the question yeah yeah so as you can see this is a pretty big advantage for companies to actually build their models pass their specific data and then have something unique okay um, what i'm assuming that in the future uh, people will build their own ai models and will be able to also sell them because uh, if you build model with some unique data that nobody else has and this is something of a value of somebody else you can actually sell this model um, with this specific data without actually providing the data to uh, anybody else so your data is always going to be hidden behind chat gpt okay uh, and chat gpt is just going to answer based on uh, this data that you provided okay any questions i advise you to ask questions because again your assignment is going to be related to that uh, so you should be able to actually fine tune uh, models okay any questions any questions for building the json l file no okay any questions for uploading the file to chat gpt any questions for building the model? Yeah. Debugging? Uh, so debugging of the uh, chat GPT or? So so you mean like uh, in uh, in AI? So. oh you mean uh in pie charm right yeah. yes of course of course i can show that so before showing that any other questions no okay um all right so debugging right okay it's pretty easy so in pie charm um I'll first do a very simple example. So print one, A equals five, print A, B equals six, print B, okay? So we're just writing something very, very simple so we can debug it, okay? Uh, so in PyCharm you can debug things guys by uh, firstly uh, pressing right here this red dot means that your code is actually going to stop there okay 
So this is a little bit out of the topic, but I think it's uh, actually a, a good question because uh, obviously everybody will need to debug at some point code. So I will just explain very quickly. Okay, so you have this red dot here. Then you're clicking this icon, debug, right? Not the play button, but the debug button. And once you do that, your code is going to stop right here, okay? Now, one very good thing about PyCharm, and actually I can show you this also with loops, is that uh, all the variables that are generated, okay, they are not only going to be displayed right here in your data window, but also they are displayed on the screen. And this also accounts for the for loops, so you can see how the variables change in real time in every for loop, which is, I think, very, very uh, good tool for learning. Very good tool. Okay, so let's say we're here and um, we want to go to the next line to see what's going to happen when we move a step, a step further. So I think it was this. Uh, I might be mistaken. It's either this or that. Okay, so when you click this symbol right here, this is step into. So you go to the next line without finishing the code. Okay, so now I went to the next line and the code is stopped right here b equals to 6. Now, if I move a little bit more, okay, then uh, here is going to display me the value of b. Also, another thing that you can notice is that here we have the console, so you can also see in real time what's happening. So, so far, we printed 1, we printed the value of a, okay, and now we're on this line, so we haven't printed b yet, okay. Then I can switch to debugger, and I can uh, put another step into, okay? And you can see that right here I'm getting the value of B, okay? And uh, you can also see obviously the value of B right here as well, okay? So obviously if I go on our step into, the code is completed. So this is a very simple example. Now, another way I will show you real quick. Uh, how we deal with the for loops, okay? So, for example, for i in range um, 6, okay? Uh, print i, okay? So, let's say uh, I want to debug that. So, I will put, let's say, I have a for loop. It's way more complicated than this, but something is happening, and in the for loop, I'm getting some error. Okay, something is happening, I don't know what's going on. So what do I do here? I put the red dot here and then I see step by step how the for loop is executed. Okay, so uh, I will again click the debug icon here. And now we're going into the beginning of the loop. If I do a uh, step into, you can see that initially for the first iteration, i is equal to zero. Okay, and now Actually, here I had to print i, sorry. Let's do i. Okay. Step into i equal to 0, print i. Okay. Now, in the next iteration, you can see now i changes to 1. And so on and so on. Now i will change to 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And of course, in the console, you can see how each time it is printed. Now, uh, many of you might ask yourself, okay, this loop is very straightforward. Why do we need to debug that? It's pretty obvious. But if you have, especially nested for loops, looping over lists, looping over dictionaries, uh, it might become like really complicated. So in that way, you can really see each variable in the loop, how it changes. So if you have an error, you know exactly what's happening, okay? Okay, so we went a little bit out of topic, but I hope this uh, answers, right? Uh, is that answering completely your question, or there is anything else? I was actually having a doubt, like, where took the breakpoint issue? Oh, okay, yeah. No so, yeah, when you have a loop, uh, always better in the beginning of the loop. Uh, always set it after the code in which you are 100% sure that it works, so you don't waste time, okay? Uh, and yeah, then once you set it, you can just go every iteration and make sure it works. Okay.
uh, any other questions okay so um, what we're going to do I'm still uh, working on your assignment okay so I'm still writing it down um, I have some baseline that I will show you right now but it might be some changes usually when I add changes I tend to make it easier than what I'm showing you okay so don't worry about it um, this time I will ask you more to explain things like how fine-tuning is done etc 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 okay so you might be required you know to write things down like how this works how that works uh, I uh, advise you don't use ChatGPT for those explanations because uh, it is trained on the on specific data up to specific year okay so uh, it might not only tell you okay I have no idea what you're asking me about but also it might give you wrong information without telling you okay so the best the best thing that you can do uh, watch the video from this lecture read the reference from the lecture okay and use that you know to uh, write on the questions that I'm asking you during the assignment this is the best way to answer properly okay so let me show you for now what we have okay so what we have for now here is the assignment uh, we're imagining that you're an AI engineer in a uh, software company and you're asked to fine-tune a model, right? Uh, so how do you do that? Uh, you'll be required to find the text, just like how we did today, uh, individual text for each of you, okay? That obviously, if I see uh, two people have similar text, I will think about that something uh, might not be very good, okay? So. Uh, everybody should get like a similar uh, different text from each other and uh, you should create uh, the JSONL file that we did today pretty straightforward uh, you should create 15 data training questions just like we did today um, okay after that you will uh, need to use this prompt you know to uh, create the questions I give you examples here create a file, send it, uh, verify that the model has been uh, created and then show me how to use the model, okay? So, uh, I will ask you questions on how you're doing those things, okay? Uh, and here I also wrote the deliverables, which is going to be the JSONL file, the app.py file, okay? And uh, some text file that is going to have the uh, name of the module that you created which is of course important because uh, this is how i will identify your model okay uh, again this might be modified i might make it like a little bit simpler but this is basically the assignment as you can see it's pretty much what we've done today okay any questions for the assignment okay uh, say again? Uh, yes, JSON. Can you any message, any content? Any content, yeah. The content is up to you. And if, uh, you have mentioned like the ID, right? How the ID is going to be generated? Uh, so the ID of the model is going to be generated. Yeah, good question. Uh, I'll show you. Okay. So once you create um, your model here is how you can get the id of the model i actually think you have an id and you have a model name for me it actually doesn't matter which one you provide they are unique identifiers for every model so i don't mind you can either provide uh so once you run this job here okay you can provide the fine tuned model okay this variable will hold the uh, name of the model okay it will it will print it in your uh, terminal all right uh, or if you do uh, job dot id it should 
um, show you the ID of your model. So either of those work for me. It doesn't matter pretty much. And this is how they actually look like. So this is the model name. Okay. And this is the job ID right here. I look at any objects and find the fit. Uh, so no, of course not. So uh, you create a JSON file, you upload it, right? And then with this JSON file, you create an uh, AI model or you explain how to create AI model. I will see. It really depends uh, if we're able to uh, make this work. I mean, to create new AI models, which I think it works fine. You just we can create three at the same time. No more than this. For example, the last three that uh, actually now some people created, they got created here. So they work fine. But yeah, uh, to your question. So you create the JSON file, JSONL file, you upload it. With this JSONL file, you create a new fine-tuned model and you provide me the ID of this fine-tuned model. Okay? Uh, yeah, so you can use GPT 3.5 Turbo as a baseline to create your fine-tuned model, like we did right here. Uh, right here. Okay, so see, this is how you create the model. You need to do exactly the same thing. Uh, so, this is the command with which you create and the parameters that you pass. The file you just uploaded and the base model, that's it. And your fine-tuned model or fine-tuned job actually, it's created, that's it. So the file, when you create the file, yeah. it's gonna get downloaded on your system, right? Yes, so. You uh, have to copy the files? Yes, correct. So let me go here, okay, so you create the JSONL file, you pass the uh, data points inside, you pass the path to your JSON file right here. I don't, you don't see here path because the JSONL file is in, inside the same directory, okay? So I don't need to provide the full path since they are in the same place. To be safe and sound, you can just copy the full path, the absolute path and just pass it here it's exactly the same thing. But if you have your file in download or in document, some other folder, uh, you can just copy the, the full part of the file and pass it there, okay? This is going to be exactly the same thing. You need to pass the path to the file. So you create the file locally, you run this code with the path of the file, okay? And with purpose fine tune, this is gonna be always the same, and then a new file is created, make sure that you print the file so you can actually see the ID, otherwise you won't see it. And then use the file ID for uh, creating the new job. You can do both at the same time if you want, so you can create a file and then immediately write here file.id and this will upload the file and at the same time create the new fine-tuned model. The ID. Yeah. So this is when I print the uh, the file. Let me show you. I'll do it now, so you see. Okay. So let's say we upload. We want to upload a file. Okay. Okay. So see, uh, here I'm uploading the file, and then I'm going to print file, right? So let's do that. Okay. So I uploaded the file, and the ID is right here the first element. Uh, why I say you can do the two things at the same time is because when you upload a file, you can directly here pass file.id. This will pass immediately the ID even without you seeing it. So if I do here uh, print file.id, now it uploads the file and it prints me only the ID right here, okay? Any more questions?
No? You're clear how to do it? Yeah. Good. There, you're clear, guys, how to do it more or less? Or you need to review a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. How how do you feel on this assignment? Uh, one more doubt. Say, yeah. Again, what is adding tune model ID? Um, the fine tune model ID. So, this is once you create the a fine tuned model job. Okay, let me show you. Okay. So, uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to train the model. Okay, and this is fine tuned model, as you can see. And here I'm going to print the whole object. So let's see that. Okay. Uh, so you can see that this is the fine tuned job ID right here. Okay. So this is when I train the model, you get an object once you run the function. And then uh, you're just printing the model. So this is the ID. Again, in the same way, if I do fine tuned model dot ID, uh, I'm gonna get just the ID. So everyone got a different ID, get like different ID. Everybody will get different ID. Yes. Same ID. Uh, say again. Everyone gets same ID when you run the file. Um, so no. Uh, every, so when you create a new job, it's with unique unique ID that is specifically yours. But what about the file ID? Is it same for everyone? Oh no, it's gonna be different. So when you upload your file, I mean, firstly. Even if everyone is using the same file, which of course, if you use different text, it's gonna be different files, okay? Uh, but when you upload your file, uh, you get a reply with your ID. When uh, he uploads the file, he will get unique ID for him, specific one. Based on the ChatGPT secret key? Um, so this is not, not based on the secret key. It is just, um, you know, when you, upload a file, it just give you a, a unique reference to that file, okay? So let's say you upload a file to a database and what they are doing, they are giving you, okay, with this key, you can access this file. This key points to your file. His key is pointing to his file, okay? So every time you user run, you get unique ID? Uh, every time when, sorry? Every time a new user run, they get unique ID? Uh, yeah, so uh, every time a new file is uploaded, you get a specific ID for that file. Every time a new fine-tuned model is created, you get a specific ID and model name for that uh, new model, okay? Because imagine if uh, two different people, I mean, if I upload two files and they have the same ID, then if I want to use one of those files, how will uh, AI know which file I'm referring to? So the ID just refers to the specific file. More questions? No? Mm -hmm. 